Welcome to The Idea Space, a podcast devoted to sharing strategies and tools to help you make your dream life possible. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, a teacher turned entrepreneur. It's my mission to help women grow their businesses and get what they want without feeling guilty, overwhelmed, or confused. If you're tired of your ideas spinning around your mind and you really want something more for yourself, you're in the right place. Learn how to create the space to make your ideas a reality. I promise if I can do this, anyone can. Let's go. Hey, 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 welcome to episode 112 of the Idea Space Podcast. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, and this month I'm talking all about how to make room for what you want more of in 2021. And I'm going to bet that one of those things you want more of is money. Today, I'm going to share two practical strategies with you to help you make room for more money. But before we get there, we've got to talk about some foundations behind these strategies and why they work. So I was walking in my neighborhood with a new friend. She's a teacher on hiatus from teaching. She's home raising her 18-month-old daughter. And we were on our walk. We have a lot of time to kill. And we were talking about my business. She was really fascinated by how somebody who used to be a teacher now runs a business. And she was really interested with how I work the whole thing. And she was curious about you know, my programs, how I fill my coaching spots and how I get people to pay me and how I talk to people about the cost of coaching. And when I told her how it all works, her eyes got really big and she was like, oh my God, I couldn't even charge for tutoring. I just felt so bad asking parents to pay me. And that moment it hit me. Oh, right. I remembered when I was a teacher, which was a long time ago. I haven't been a teacher for 13 years at this point. When I was a teacher asking for money or the idea of having to promote yourself, it was like super cringy, so yucky. We teachers are taught to be the opposite of anything entrepreneurial, right? Like we're taught to be selfless because money is gross. We're here to serve and help. The message is that we're selfish if we want more money. This comes from many assorted various sources. I'm not going to get into that here. But suffice it to say, the thought pattern is deeply ingrained in educators that money is gross. Wanting more money is gross. There's something wrong with you. You're not being selfless enough. So in this conversation with my friend Andrea, I realized that I've changed because my identity is now that of an entrepreneur. I default to that kind of thinking. And I've come to learn that just because I want more money does not make me greedy or horrible. I actually serve in many different ways. and. I also deserve to get paid for it. But there's all these things I never had to think of as an educator that I now think of daily as an entrepreneur, right? Marketing, client meetings, networking, pricing, pitching, offering services, sales. Those are just part of my daily landscape. But that was not my life when I was a teacher. So I I was kind of exciting to realize that like I've just finally normalized that I'm an entrepreneur. But until this conversation, I kind of forgot that I used to be horrified by wanting to have more money. I forgot about the disconnect I felt between being a helper and feeling deserving to get paid for it or deserving to get paid for a high level of expertise, which I also had as a teacher, right? So when you're in service in that way, there's this unstated but deeply held belief that you don't deserve money for it, regardless of whatever service industry you're in. So, you know, we struggle to pay bills. We struggle to ask for more money. We definitely don't ask for raises. So seven years ago, I made this gigantic leap from education into entrepreneurship, and I spent way too much time feeling gross for wanting to make money at it. And that limiting thought was definitely cemented into reality when I actually made zero dollars in my first business. Talk about evidence. Oh, my brain thought, you don't believe you deserve money, Jen? Great. Here's zero money for all of your hard work, proof that you don't deserve it. And even now, when I talk to my teacher friends about what they charge for their summer camps or tutoring services or skills tutorials that they do, they're so grossed out by having to ask for money and they always undercharge. To get compensated for their expertise is pretty unfathomable to them. Teachers are not the only ones suffering with this issue, however. Many women solopreneurs, and actually, you know, like many women in the marketplace, struggle to talk about pricing and payment, etc. Now, we've talked about this problem many times before on this podcast. Not wanting to ask for payment causes us to hide. It gives us money blocks. We avoid sales calls. We don't make offers. 
And I've also introduced you to several coaches who are experts in helping you overcome these money blocks. But so we're talking about that today. I don't want to talk today about why this happens. What I do want to talk to you about is how all of us, whether you are an educator, whether you serve in some other way, whether you serve by working from home with your family, whether you're an entrepreneur, this is something else entirely. Every single one of us wants to make more money, but are we making space for it to come into our lives? Let's talk about two practical things that I find clients, actually most people in general, are not doing. Because frankly, looking at our money and talking about our money is hard, so most of us just avoid it. So let's talk about the first step. Do you know why you want more money? I know this seems like a ridiculously simple question, but it is really foundational. And what I have found is that a lot of people don't know why they want more money. They just know that they want more money and they feel this panic around it. So is it for you to pay off an old debt? To save up for a dream vacation to put your kid through college? Is it to buy that dream handbag that you have in mind or those shoes with a red sole? One of my clients had a breakthrough in this realm when she realized that the reason she really wanted to make real money was so she could travel the world. I wish you could have seen the joy on her face when she finally understood her motivation. And then I swear, only then was she ready to grow her business for real. Before that, she was kind of dicking around in her business, dabbling here and there, never really focused or motivated. And once she realized why she wanted to make money, she got real focused and real motivated real fast. So that's the first place I want you to start. Why do you want to make more money? Write down all the reasons. No reason is a bad reason. All of the reasons are good reasons. Put it down. Don't feel ashamed about it. The second practical strategy here is, are you looking at your money? Is your bank account messy? Is your wallet messy? Do you even ever look? This is a very practical and easy strategy that again, sounds too simple to make a difference, but I cannot tell you how many people are paying for shit they're not using. Think about the subscriptions to apps they never use, the gyms they never attend, the services they're not using. Tickets inside a messy wallet collecting late fees. Gift certificates never used. You don't need to judge yourself about this if this is striking a chord with you. Looking at your wallet and your bank accounts is simply research. You're just collecting information, considerate data. Believe me, this has happened to me too. In fact, for four months into quarantine at the beginning of COVID back in March, we realized we were paying for my son's membership at his climbing gym. Four months into quarantine. I mean, they were freaking closed down. They were grateful for those clients who were still making payments, but they never, you know, tapped us on the shoulder and said, Hey, you're still making payments. Thank you. I mean, I was pissed off, but not at them. I was pissed off at us for not being clean with our account. And there was literally nothing I could do about it except note it, feel glad that we're able to help support this business during the lean time. And then we canceled it. Please stop judging yourself what your, for what your bank account looks like or for what your wallet looks like, and just freaking do it, clean it up. Now, when I started this practice, it was a 100% game changer. And now I'm not afraid to open my bank app where I used to avoid it. I used to panic like, oh, what's in there? What am I paying for? What, do I, what, what did I do? Why did I screw this up? Because I know whatever's going on in there, I can handle it. And PS, you can handle it too, because you have already handled it. Whether your bank account is messy or you're paying for stuff, or there's bills that you have that you don't know how you're going to pay for, I promise you, you're already surviving whatever shitty ass thing is happening in there. And you've handled it with fear and worry and anxiety. Imagine what it's like to handle it with neutrality, just to go in there and say, this is just information. This is just data. I can make decisions based on this data. You don't need to be a millionaire to clean up your accounts. You don't need to be a millionaire to feel neutral about your money. But you do need to make room for the money that you want to flow into a clear space. Because remember, this month, that's what we're focused on, helping you make space for what you want more of in 2021. And I'm going to bet money that you want more money. Now, put these two simple, straightforward, practical tools into place and see what shifts for you. You may feel anxious or judgy while doing in that. That is totally normal. Please don't judge yourself for feeling judgy. Don't judge yourself for feeling anxious. Just expect those feelings to come up when you try. You will not die from those. Just breathe and use all the tools that we talk about weekly on this podcast. My number one favorite being future you. Think about next year you, December 2021 version of you who has the income of her dreams and a clean relationship with money that allows it to flow in with ease. 
So this podcast is sponsored by the Customized Content Creation Planner. And if you're looking for a simple system to help you make more money by putting quality content out to your audience without the overwhelm, without being stuck, this is for you. So go to www.jenliddy.com forward slash planner. For some reason on my website, I have to put the www in there and it's such a pain in the neck, but I promise you, one of the ways that you can bring more money into your business is by connecting with your audience in really authentic, meaningful ways that are consistent. And I help you do that in this simple, simple system. Go to jenliddy.com forward slash planner. And again, I appreciate you being here every week to show up for my podcast and get whatever you can out of it. I'd love to hear from you. Feel free to contact me at jenliddy.com and I will see you back here next week. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the Idea Space in your podcast app and tell that friend of yours who needs some help getting where she wants to go. I'd be so appreciative if you left a review because then we can help more women create the space for their ideas too. Go to jenliddy.com forward slash free to grab the many free resources there to help you move forward. And I will see you next time. Bye.